Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss capacity planning. The first thing I am going to discuss is the difference between theoretical capacity and practical capacity. So first we need to illustrate or clarify what is capacity because the capacity could be theoretical or could be practical. Starting with theoretical capacity. Theoretical capacity is the capacity that's in quote on paper what you theoretically can do. This is the maximum output a company can achieve if the production operated at full capacity without any downtime or interruption. So here you are using your capacity to produce. A company is using their capacity to produce without any downtime or interruptions. It assumes 100% efficiency, making as much as possible, given no time for allowance for maintenance, holidays, or any other potential disruption, which is kind of not realistic, but on paper, if we produce at full capacity, this is what we will produce. I'll give you another simple example to illustrate. Let's assume I ask my nine-year-old son to fill this measurement cup for me. Well, the capacity of this measurement cup is 1,000 milliliter. I ask him to fill it and follow me to the garden. I want to water the flowers. Well, if he fills it to 1,000 milliliter, what's going to happen? By the time he get, he get outside, he's going to drop some of it. So the theoretical capacity is 1,000 millimeter. But by the time he arrive with that cup, with that measurement cup, it's going to be less. Less is practical capacity. This is a, a realistic maximum output factoring predictable downtime or predictable issues or it could be unpredictable issues such as machine maintenance, machine breakdown, machine setup, or if we're talking about a manufacturing facilities, employee breaks and holidays, so on and so forth. So practical capacity for my son may be 750 millimeters and he'll be able to fill this fill it up. Now, this reflects practical capacity, attainable level of production or attainable level of goals while still aiming at high efficiency. So maybe the highest efficiency for my son is 750 milliliters given his age, his strength, so on and so forth. In cost accounting, when we refer to capacity, whether it's pr practical or theoretical, what we are measuring really is the production potential of a business in relationship to the fixed cost. So for a company, for, especially for a manufacturing company, when we refer to when we refer to capacity, we're referring le really to the fixed cost of that company, the manufacturing equipment, the manufacturing plant. And we're going to illustrate this point as we go along. So I'm going to look at another example, more realistic one, for a manufacturing plant, for a car manufacturing plant, to illustrate theoretical and practical capacity, then we'll dive a little bit more into capacity planning. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation, not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures. We offer practice MCQs. We offer true-false questions. We offer exercises, we offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass and you can pass with Farhat Lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance, we can help you pass the CMA exam. So let's assume a car manufacturing plant has machinery and here the machinery is the fixed cost capable of producing 1000 car per week if it's operate at 24 hour a day, seven days a week without any interruption. And what do we call this? 
This is the theoretical capacity. The theoretical capacity is producing 1,000 cars per week. Now, the practical capacity is a little bit different. In reality, the plants need time to do what? For routine maintenance, or sometimes you need to set up the machine. Just stop, maybe change color, change the setup. You need 10 hours per week for that. You might need employee breaks and shift changes. When people leave, it cannot automatically keep on going. You need to to kind of take a 10 minute break, 15 minute break, whatever, it's gonna total five hours per week. And there are holidays and unforeseen events, maybe a power outage, I don't know, unforeseen events. We're gonna factor five hours a week as well. So these factors reduce the available production time by 20 hours, 10 plus five plus five. Well, what's that going to do? With only 148 hours of production time instead of 168, now we can realistically produce 880 cars per week, and that's the practical or realistic estimation rather than theoretical capacity, the practical capacity. We know what capacity is. Let's talk about capacity planning. Capacity planning is a crucial component or element of strategic planning closely tied to capital budgeting. So capacity planning is part of strategic planning and closely tied to capital budgeting. So we're throwing three different terms at the same time. Let's define this. So what is strategic planning? Strategic planning is what you want to do. How do you see yourself in the next three, five, seven, ten 10 years down the road? This is your strategic planning. When you plan, well, you want to increase your market share. Well, if you want to increase your market share, you need people, technology, resources. Well, that's part of your capacity. So you need to plan your capacity ahead of time. And usually, if you're planning to produce more, to increase market share, you need to do what's called capital budgeting. What's capital budgeting? Capital budgeting is those large expenditure, buying a warehouse, a big machinery. So capacity planning is part of strategic planning. When you look ahead, you have to look at your capacity. How much do you have and how much do you need? And whatever you are short of, you have to input that information into your capital budgeting. So capital planning capacity planning, sorry, focuses on managing a company resources to align with the current and future markets. Over several years, you have a market demand while maximizing organize, organizational value. So when you plan your capacity, you have to plan your capacity today and you have to plan your capacity for the future. Let me give you a small example to illustrate this point. We have two businesses here. We have this lady she wanted to start a food cart and she did and what happened is as a result she has a long lines waiting for her she doesn't have the capacity to service all these people maybe she need a second person or a third person to help her she doesn't have that capacity or she may need to put a new cart to be able to serve so what's going to happen as these people wait some of them might go ahead and leave the line and she's going to lose business why because she does not have enough capacity to meet the demand so she did not plan properly to meet the demand i'm going to go from this example to this example let's assume this manufacturing facility is owned by an individual who was very optimistic he wanted to produce 10,000 units per month to serve the market. So he, he invested all this money in this manufacturing plant and guess what? A lot of capacity, not enough demand. Well, this individual did not plan properly. So here's what's going to happen is this individual invested a lot in fixed cost and capacity. Remember, when said capacity is part of fixed cost. But as a result, what's happening is we don't have demand. So the problem is we misaligned our demand with the capacity. So you have to be very careful. So there are strategies for capacity planning and there are three strategies that the companies can utilize for capacity planning. They could have a lead strategy, lag strategy, and a match strategy. Starting with the lead strategy. What is a lead strategy? This is where the person is very optimistic involve adding capacity and anticipation of future demand. You think the demand is going to be very high. And I know people like that. Matter of fact, my brother is has this mentality. He always anticipates a lot of demand. This is called a lead strategy. Well, it's a proactive approach that prepares the business to handle growth before it actually occurs. So slow down in this strategy. It's, it's great if the demand, if your demand meets your expectation but it's not good if it doesn't 
this strategy is use, useful in industries where being the first to meet market demand because it's going to offer you a competitive advantage. So if the market, you are a lead in the market. A case in point is Apple, Apple, Apple iPhone. When Apple started, when Apple started, they had no competition. Therefore, what they did, they utilized a lead strategy. And what's a lead strategy? Kind of produce to meet the demand. That's fine. So invest in equipment, invest in manufacturing facilities. So the advantage is reduce the risk of lost sales if you have a lead strategy because you have plenty of capacity. You're going to have no shortage. Customers are very happy because they're going to get their product on time. Positions the company as a market leader. And once you can dominate the market, you become the market leader. Those are the advantages of a lead strategy. The disadvantages, risk of overcapacity, if the demand does not materialize as forecasted, great. If the demand materializes, that's perfect. What if it doesn't materialize? Well, your capacity is idle, sitting, doing nothing. You have an opportunity cost here because you tied up your money in those fixed assets, and you're going to increase carrying cost for idle resources and capital investment. An example of lead strategy will be, for example, a tech company anticipating a surge in demand for its cloud storage service or anticipated demand and AI artificial intelligence well that's great to prepare the company builds additional data centers before the campaign begin ensuring it can handle the expected influx of users great if you if you believe so if the demand falls short the company will face higher cost from underutilized servers and this is what's happening with AI now many companies are doing what are building data centers to handle the AI demand down the road so moving from lead to lag strategy. Lag strategy involves adding capacity only after current capacity is exceeded. It's like this lady here that she started this food cart. What's gonna happen after she sees all these long lines, she's gonna go ahead and add the capacity. This is a reactive approach, but this minimizes the risk of overinvestment by ensuring resources are added only when absolutely necessary. The advantages are simple. You reduce the risk of overcapacity, of overspending. You optimize capital investment by waiting to confirm the demand. You wait until this demand is, is for sure, and you minimize, you don't have any idle resources to, to worry about. The disadvantages are obvious. Well, you may re, uh, your delay may result in unsatisfied customers, so delayed in response to demand causing unmet orders and unhappy customers. Also, they increase the risk of losing market share to competitors who can meet the demand faster. Let's assume another person walk, walking down the street sees this. They open their own food cart and they can steal some of your customers. So a lag strategy will be a small craft brewery waits until its current production capacity is fully utilized before investing in new fermentation tanks. So what they do, while well, this reduces the risk of wasted resources, they don't until they are for they don't add any tanks until they know for sure the demand is there. Match strategy, obviously, I hope at this point you know what match strategy is. This takes a balanced approach by adding capacity incrementally in small pieces as the demand grows, matching your demand. This strategy seeks to minimize the risk of both overcapacity and undercapacity, adjusting resources in smaller steps. The advantages, obvious, you have flexibility in responding, responding to demand changes. You're balancing risks by scaling capacity gradually. You can also avoid large upfront investments while meeting demand effectively. So that's always good stuff. How about the disadvantages? Well, frequent adjustments, which could lead to higher administrative and operational cost, and you may not fully capitalize on a sudden spike in demand. Let's assume you think that's, you know, the demand is 100 unit and suddenly the demand is 500 unit. You may not be able to keep up real quick. For example, a clothing retailer expand its distribution center in phases as online orders grow. Initially, at least as a small space near key market, as, scales, as sales increase, the retailer adds more capacity by leasing additional space. And this allows the company to avoid overcommitting resources to rental property, warehouses, while at the same time meeting the customer demand. Now, why is capacity planning important? Well, kind of, we kind of talked about why, but let's kind of summarize capital budgeting helps in estimating how much do you need for future period. Capital budgeting is how much money do you need to build to build warehouses, buy machinery, 
property, plant and equipment, building, so on and so forth. Through capacity planning, you could include this in the budget. Cost management, capacity level, remember that's fixed cost, directly influenced product cost, pricing strategies, and financial outcome. You are in charge, you are managing your fixed cost in relationship to your production. And you could have access capacity cost, maintaining unused capacity increases cost forcing higher product costs or reducing profitability in financial statement. Therefore, when you have capacity planning, you are aware of your access capacity. Therefore, you have a better picture of what's going on. And there's a strategic alignment. If you have capacity planning, you begin with this capacity planning with the initial design phase of a product and continue throughout its life cycle. So those are all benefits of capacity planning. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A manufacturing company is operating at full practical capacity, but still has excess demand. What's the best immediate solution? Okay, A, purchase additional equipment. Would this be a solution? And some of you might jump, yes, purchase equipment. We have, we're, we have excess demand. Well, yes, you have excess demand, but that's not an immediate solution. Buying Equipment is a long-term solution. So I would hold on on A because of the immediate solution. Run overtime shifts. I would say run overtime shift is better than A. Run overtime shift, it's going to cost you more, but it's going to be less than putting additional equipment. So between A and B, I can take out A. Reduce production target to meet, to manage expectation. You will never do that. You would never reduce, reduce production to meet expectation. That doesn't even make business sense. You would, you know, no one will do that. Close the gap by investing in long-term capacity. Well, A and B are the same, which is when you invest in additional equipment. Here, the problem is immediate. For now, run overtime shift. Maybe run overtime shift for three to six months. If you can't keep up, or if you see now you can do a cost-benefit analysis, then you'd say, you know what, I'm going to buy additional equipment and investing in long-term capacity. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice questions, especially if you're studying for your CMA exam, professional certification, accounting courses, finance courses. Farhat Lectures is always here to help and invest in yourself.